Welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week I'm getting my hands in the soil and doing a little winter gardening. We live in a zone 8B and I think that's changed just a tiny bit lately. We are a very mild climate so we have um, just you know no extreme temperature from one to the other and so we're able to kind of garden year-round which is really really nice. Uh, today behind me I have a little garden that's just right up by the front of the house that I'm going to clear out to get clean shear back a rose we have like a it's basically a bush rose and uh, or a shrub rose so I'm just gonna give that a little shape I'm gonna get the pine needles kind of cleaned up and moved off to another area and I'm gonna be planting just a few things Braden and I are gonna run down to a new nursery to us and we are going to go ahead and pick out just a few things to pot up it's just gonna be a simple design just kind of make it look a little bit better for the winter season and just make the front of the house a little more welcoming. So I'm excited. Um, it, we're also cutting back some of the hellebore foliage. Um, this is the time of year you definitely want to do that. You want to cut off all those old leaves so the new ones can come up. First of all the flower comes up and that's literally going to be just a few short months away. We're going to be seeing those coming up along with the crocuses and all the spring bulbs and blooms. So I'm excited for that. Braden and I headed out. We've got, we've had this like absolutely last couple days, just absolutely beautiful weather on the farm, kind of mild temperatures. And so it makes it great for, you know, just doing little projects around the farm, but also just taking time to kind of do some gardens and winter gardening, or I call it winter gardening. And so we're heading to a nursery just about 30 minutes from our house. And we've never been here before, so we're kind of excited to see what it looks like. And um, the reason I found this nursery is I follow them on, or they follow me on Instagram. And so um, I started following them, and they're just like a family owned and operated small nursery. And so I thought we would go check them out today and see if I can find anything for just a little porch pot again <clears throat> little area that I'm redoing a little garden just up by the house so I thought I'd take you guys along and let you kind of see what this place is all about and see what we can find for this little winter garden design and then we'll just see how it turns out see what we can find Because that little area is kind of part shade. These will look nice in the pots. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I love these hellebores. These are, I have a love for hellebores, I think. This one is really pretty. It just says ivory prints. It's mm. really, it kind of looks like a soft color, but even just like some of this uh, grass, the black Mondo grass would be pretty. Shall we get a cart? Yeah. So that's a steppable ground cover. That's kind of cool. Like moss almost? Well, I don't know. It says walk on me. Red leaf thrift. It looks like it's got the little pretty pink flowers. Flowers in April. They have these gorgeous gardenias and I'm thinking about getting one because mm. <laughs> I love that. You could get a couple of I think, for that container and I do kind of like that. But look at this one. I have one of these. I like the shape of the leaves. Leopard plant. I think we grabbed some of the little ferns Me too. in the grass. Yeah, let's get a deer fern. I like the way those look. I know, this one's kind of cool too because I think it changes color. Oh, autumn it? fern. But I think, see how it kind of turns that silver or that um, kind of blushy color? Pretty. It looks more like a copper actually. Yeah, and I like this one too. That one would be pretty with it. That's okay. a, it's a um, Japanese holly fern. I kind of like those hoopers over there. Okay. I don't know what that is. 
so that was cool. That would be kind of fun trailing over it's the like a vine. I know. Mm. I like that. So this is just all for that one little pot we have? Yeah. Okay. Are we gonna put anything in the garden or do you not want to I was to thinking do about doing some more cucaras, but what do you think of this one? I really like this one. This is um, coral bells. I like that. Coral bells. Coral bells. So Braden, I think this one looks better. I like the color of it and I like the variegated. So let's do this one instead. So I kind of found That's this nice one. Thing. I thought I would do instead. And this is called Rainbow Sunrise. So you're getting three for the garden? Yeah, and I think this is it. We got everything, it looks we like. We got everything. I don't know, I kind of feel like I need something darker, but I know I can add to this later, you know? Like one of these grasses, Brayden. Do I dare what is get it? a hellebore for it? Yeah. Don't those get big? They can't, but so we can just move it to the garden. I actually think you should get one of the black grasses. I really okay, like this. one black grass. Um, I found a smaller one. It looks a little bit better and will be easier to fit in. So I'm going to get that one. And these are really cool and just like handmade gifts locally. Socks? It's cute. Yeah, this garden center is really cool. Too. Oh, here's a uh, Hori Hori's, right? Yeah, Hori Hori's. Look at the candles, are kind of fun. So I think we got a nice selection. They were super nice folks, really, really cute inside, kind of modern and kind of vintage all at the same time. Just really fun little place. So we'll definitely be back. We got a bundle of things for the garden. This time of year we have various very, very short daylight, so we are pushing it on time. Hoping to get this all done tonight. If not, we'll pick up tomorrow and get the whole garden finished up. So, we'll, but we'll, we'll see how far we can get. We have to hurry to catch the light. <laughs> So Brayden and I picked a pretty green palette with just pops of the dark foliage and then this pink, which is really pretty. And that will match the hellebore pink bloom here when that starts to go off. And then also in the garden that we do have some pink colored, coral colored uh, hellebores as well. So we can start laying out the plants. I'm gonna just start raking first, cleaning it up and making it beautiful. hellebores you can see these old leaves are kind of tattered and they're starting to turn dark and this is where you can get disease 
if you leave them for too long. So you wanna come down and you can already see the new growth coming here. And we've got three coming up, some beautiful blooms. So what we're gonna do is just kinda of cut back some of this old foliage and get rid of it. Makes the garden look a little bit clean. So there's that one. You wanna make sure you get those into the uh, burn pile or something like that. Hellebore makes for a great foliage for designing as well. Um, we use it sometimes like in a more tropical design. So this one that I'm cutting back is Winter Jewels uh, Cherry Blossom, which is a really beautiful color. So that'll be fun to see come up. You can see just all the new darts coming along. Oh look you guys, there's some crocuses coming up here. Right here, that'll be pretty. So now I just have to cut back a few more hellebores. They're turning this beautiful color gold. And I'm gonna be cutting back this Autumn Joy, which is a sedum as well, just getting those completely out. Raking up some of these, um, we have the Ponderosa Pines and on top of us. I just want it to look a little bit cleaner. So now I'm just going to clean it all up, rake it all up. I'm gonna place out the plants tonight. We're losing light. Tomorrow morning, we'll actually plant everything out. And this will give me time to just kind of look and see how the garden looks. And if I like the placement and just sleep on it for a while. I'm just working on a rose bush. This is just a shrub rose. It's kind of like a little tiny tea rose, pink, beautiful little blooms. And it's just full of blooms year round for the most part until now. Um, so I'd say probably seven months out of the year, it's got some beautiful blooms on it. It dries really well. It's kind of a color that we don't use in floral design too much. We are just going to chop it back, shape it a little bit, clean it up tomorrow. I'll do some fine pruning on it when I have more light. But for to now, I'm just gonna get it cleaned up a little bit and away from the trees. Using some just shears, very well loved shears, but they still are working pretty good. So it is getting pretty dang dark. So Braden and I are just gonna finish up just raking a little bit tomorrow. We'll place them out and get them finished potted up for you because then you can totally see and appreciate what we're doing because we can barely see what we're doing. <laughs> at it again this morning uh, we've got a little drizzle so I'm gonna be working in the mist of the morning it's a little foggy it just was getting too dark last night so what I'm going to be doing is laying out everything seeing how I like it um, we do have a lot of the pine so we've got the ponderosa pine here that kind of sheds its needles and that makes actually for a really good mulch so I just don't want it right here so I'm gonna move it actually to another area just some walk paths that we have and so it's not gonna go to waste because that actually works really well to keep any weeds down and just kind of keep the area from just getting out of control. So I'm gonna reuse some of this. I gotta sift it through and then, you know, cause some people in some uh, parts of the country use it as like a mulch uh, to keep weed suppression down. So it's a good thing. So what I'm gonna do is just lay everything out and see how it looks, see how I like it, get this little pot planter. I'm just gonna add a little more soil to it, some fertilizer and then pot up that little planter and go from there. We have some red flowering dogwood, um, which is native to Oregon, right here. And you can tell it's already, because it's been really, really warm here in Oregon, you can see it's already leafing out again. Isn't that crazy? Uh, here's a new leaf here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually come through here and cut some of this down. 
because I don't want it to leaf right now. And well, it, I mean, it's still gonna do its thing, but I want to, it's just kind of a scraggly bush. I'm just gonna get it tamed down a little bit, shape it a little bit. And um, yeah, it's never been pruned really. So I'm just gonna kind of make it look a little bit better. So what I'm kind of looking for is any dead and dying branches. Um, there's obviously a lot of kind of like some old growth, I guess, that you just break it right off, but you can tell where it is kind of, you know, dead branching. Um, they're just kind of, the bark is kind of peeling. Here is one that's very much alive and you can just tell that the bark is looking really nice. It has some peeling, but that's kind of normal. But what I'm trying to do is just kind of open up and trying to get some airflow and it's a beautiful plant it does great we use it a lot for foliage and the hummingbirds absolutely love it it's got these red flowers that kind of dangle down it's one of the first flowering things on the farm that provides some food for the hummingbirds so it's kind of fun to watch but yeah i'm just opening it up cleaning it up Ooh, there's tons of needles kind of down inside so i'm just kind of trying to clean that out a little bit too Okay, so we have a couple of bulbs I kind of forgot about. So there's several different alliums. So it's a late blooming allium. It's really pretty, it's got a smaller head to it so you can tell like the, the bulb itself is just a really small headed one. Anyways, so it's gonna be pretty kind of airy. And then this is, I believe, some snowdrops. So I got some white snowdrops. They're super early. You can see they're already poking through. So I was gonna just do a few snowdrops through here. I think that would look really pretty with the crocuses coming up. This is an anemone. I'm gonna do this later. This is gonna go in a different garden. So it's a blue anemone. It's really pretty. So yeah, so we're gonna just take the snowdrops and I might, let's see what else. Oh, I have more. Blue squall. So this is a blue early blooming um, beauty. So I'm gonna put some of those in too. We will see how this goes. Got my bags. This is way too much for the space, but I'm gonna add them in and then this is gonna be full. It doesn't look very pretty, you guys. I need to clean it up a little bit more, but it's a start and uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll put down some mulch when we're done and hopefully it'll make it look better. So I'm cleaning up these Autumn Joy sedums, which are just beautiful for late fall foliage and bouquets and you can kind of see where I pulled some of the the roots out but this is a really good way to propagate these is um, just taking a few cuttings or stems they just pull right out here's one like that and I'm gonna pop them up and we're gonna have more of these I'm just gonna put them in a gallon pot and uh, just get them going for another area because these are huge they actually need divided so this is a good time to kind of be looking for things that you're going to be dividing or you want more of but this is a great one to do because it is a sedum and sedums are you know really good at propagating so make you make yourself feel like you're a pro gardener here's another little guy that one's just on its own you can see its roots already super cool So I'm to the point where I'm liking how everything's kind of cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the plants and see how I like it. And then we'll start planting away. in this pot of this grass there's 
several babies so you could actually divide these up if you wanted to um, and make more which I might do actually um, and put them in other areas I kind of want to keep them in a pot because these do get carried away and they will spread um, just like you see here but it is just a really fun foliage and really pretty so this is a euphorbia euphorbia miners morlet it's like a merlot i know it says it almost is like a merlot it should be merlot but this needs full sun and on the side of the garden over here it tends to get some full sun so i think it's going to be okay if i kind of tuck it back behind this um hookra and yeah it'll kind of shade shade the hookra because this one does get kind of big it's um let me look at the size it's full sun zone hardiness six and then size is 13 to 24 inches tall so i think what it's going to do is sometimes the hellebores in this area get a little bit sun scorched so i'm going to put this guy right here and that will get really big and kind of protect all this area a little bit more than it would just on its own so this is a deer fern. It is an evergreen fern. I know a lot of you were talking about ferns that were evergreen, which add a lot of winter interest. It gets about 18 to 24 inches tall. It does tolerate just a little bit of sun, part sun. So I think it's gonna be great in this area. I'm just gonna tuck it kind of up here at the edge. This is gonna be nice and big. And then it's gonna be tucked right up against, there's some hellebores in here and then some blooming, uh, beautiful bloom, spring blooming crocuses and things like that that come up. So I think that's gonna look great there. And with just a little bit of sun in the afternoon, just for a few hours, it's gonna tolerate it just fine. So this is Ottoman Fern and it changes color, which is really pretty you can see on the tag here and it is zone um, four to nine actually which is nice it's got a nice broad um, growing zone and it gets about 24 inches wide by 24 tall so again it can tolerate just a little bit of sun so i'm going to actually pop that one just behind the fern that we have here um, i think that will look really cool even though the pot is a lot smaller i think that combo is going to look really nice actually i probably need it further back i always crowd things so it's good to kind of give things a little bit of space okay last one this is a japanese holly and it actually gets really big um 18 to 30 inches tall so the tallest variety out of all of them um this is just beautiful beautiful fern i like how it kind of has these like ruffly edges to it or kind of i don't know it's almost very bold um edges to them so this one i'm gonna plant on the other side because it doesn't tolerate as much sun it can have a little bit and so this this side over here gets just a tiny bit of shade but excellent for woodland gardens so I'm just going to tuck it back here with these other hookras, just behind them, I think. So I think I like this. I think that hellebore just up front is going to have that nice, beautiful kind of blush glow. And then with that grass, it, it just looks really nice. Um, it also has some daffodils growing up, which look how big they are already. So I think the little butter yellow would be nice. And then we're going to have whites. It's going to look so pretty. I love it. Let's get planting. Okay, so this one's called Green Spice Coral Bells and it's got that yummy color. I think it's more like a blushy, beautiful green gray foliage. I like it. So this one's called a Rainbow Maiden. So this one is um, just a really nice 24 to 36 inches. It is a zone eight and it's grown for its beautiful foliage. Sometimes I have these die on me, even though we're a zone 8B. It's sheltered. And the other thing is, is this, this doesn't get enough sun in the summertime to, so I'll be taking this one out. I almost felt like I should just pot it, 
put it in there with the pot because it'd make it easier to pull back out. But I think I'm just gonna, since the pot is so small, I'm just gonna go ahead and pot it up and I'll pull it out later when I go to make it, you know, beautiful for us uh, after spring. So this is just getting us through the winter months. This is another one that I'm gonna be pulling out of this pot as well, but this is a hellebore ivory prince it's called. And it's got this, you can kind of see on the label here, it's kind of got a pink blush undertone, which I really like against the coral bells, which should be so pretty. And then also this grass, just bringing those colors together. Anyways, I'm gonna pop that up. This one will come out and go into a different garden later, but uh, for now, we'll get it here into its new home. It's quite root bound, you can see that. So I'm just gonna loosen it a little bit. It'll be happy in the, the new space for sure. The last thing I have is this black mondo grass. That's a lot to say, but this is really pretty. It also has a little bit of a flower that comes on in a, in, um, later in the year, which is like a pink color. So this is the one that had several little shoots off of it. So I'm gonna actually divide this up. <laughs> look at the root on that one. Oh dear Lord, it needs help. So look at this, you guys. I'm just pulling these apart and pull this out and I'm gonna use some muscle. these plants that we have growing here I kind of wanted to keep going with the porch look of the two wine barrels that we put together earlier this season um, I just want to keep that flowing and look that's just gonna come straight from when people first walk in and then into the house so I think it's working so far So now I'm just gonna plant the rest up and uh, get them going. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put in some snowdrops and I'm just gonna do a couple little areas because snowdrops do best when you wanna kinda clump them together. They're showier that way. But I think it's gonna look really nice just keeping this very, very neutral white woodland garden. Really pretty.
Okay, well, I'm really pleased on how this all turned out. My woodland winter garden. And it was really good just to get back in to just my hands in the soil, even though I'm wearing my gloves because it's cold and wet. Couple tips is make sure that you're watering this time of year, especially if we get some really dry, cold spells, um, the plants will dry out. These are newly planted. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them a really good water through now and start watching the whole garden come to life. It's gonna be beautiful. So the other tip I have for you is just to make sure that you're watching your new plants or any plants this time of year for slugs. You can put down some sluggo or some type of slug bait for them um, just so they don't eat away all your hard work. So those are the couple things that I like to kind of keep an eye on this time of year when we're winter gardening. So I'm going to put down just a thin layer of mulch over the top just to make it look really clean and pretty as pretty as it's gonna look. But when I do that, I like to use some buckets to, and I'm just using some of our flower buckets to put over the plants so they don't get all dirty. And then I'll rinse them down after I'm done, get everything watered in. And it just kind of protects them when I'm, I'm juicing up with the compost over the top is our, my mulch. Well, that's it for us here at Crowley House this week. I hope you enjoyed that winter garden. If you haven't yet subscribed or given us a big thumbs up and a comment below, tell me what you think of this winter garden. Do you winter garden? I don't know. Am I the crazy person? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of us out there. Anyways, until next week, much success in all you do and grow. We'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye.